I always like driving at night much more than the daytime, but that has changed over the years a little bit because of glare and simply because there's a lot of bad stuff that happens at night. Plus, if you ever get into trouble, businesses aren't open, it's not as easy to just go and get help, and most people are suspicious of people walking around at night anyway. Not more suspicious enough to just stop and see what they need. I know I am. But there's a lot of bad things that happen with driving at night and a lot of people that don't like to do it at all and I don't blame them. This video is probably going to give us a couple examples why. This one's by Spooked. Make sure to head on over to his channel and subscribe guys. Hit the notification bell and if you like reaction videos make sure to subscribe to my channel as well. Let's get into this reaction. I was driving back home with my girlfriend at the time. All right. It was Christmas Eve. Okay. And my mother's family used to hold a large gathering at my aunt's house. This was my girlfriend's first time meeting with my extended family, and she got on quite well with them. Right. We spent the majority of the afternoon and evening talking, playing poker, opening presents, and leaving an assortment of adult beverages. That sounds so like a pretty good evening. My evening. girlfriend was a little <laughs> drunk by the time we had to leave. Okay. It was it around 11 p.m. or so, right? and I was driving my girlfriend's car along a highway. Okay. Now, this stretch of road is surrounded by farms and dense patches of forest, and parts of it are really dark. Sounds like... But I grew up in this area, <laughs> going so I knew this house. road like the back of my hand. Right. Surrounding both sides of the road were thick forests, mm -hmm. and there were no lights, so the only thing we could see was the area directly in front of our headlights. Right. It was... As the highway started to flatten out, that something sprints across the road so suddenly like a deer. that I almost hit whatever it was. It's happened I slam to me a few on the times. brakes. I turned to my girlfriend and asked her if she saw it as well. Okay. She confirmed that she had, but she couldn't make out what it was. Maybe it was a coyote, right? as they are a fairly common sight in this area. True. But something felt off about it. Okay. Whatever it was that ran in front of the car disappeared into the woods next to the road. Coyotes don't usually just dart out in front of cars. Not like that, anyway. No, but... So for some reason, what else would you I decided to check be? it out. An animal, right? I turned the car around and switched on the high beams to better light up the forest in which this thing had vanished in. It's probably not a good idea. I step out of the car <laughs> and walk towards the woods. Just keep going. I don't see anything. But now it feels like perhaps I'd made a grave error. Uh-huh. My heart is pounding. And the hairs on the back of my neck are standing at full you got, attention. You just got a bad feeling about but something? But I still don't see anything unusual in the trees. Well, then get the heck out. Suddenly, the car's horn blasts. I walk back into the car. Okay. And ask my girlfriend why she leaned on the horn like that. She said nothing. Instead, she pointed to a spot about 50 feet where I was standing. All right. I looked over in that direction. And that's when I saw it. Surely this was the thing that ran in front of our car. It was it an animal? It was a man. Oh, snap! He was completely naked. His skin was covered in dirt and mud. Ugh. And in one of his hands, he was holding a hatchet. What? Was he trying to make he a fire? Us, <laughs> and then he smiled. No! He waved to us no. just before turning around that was creepy and walking as back into the forest. Needless to say, we got the hell out of there. He didn't try to murder you. Once we were safely driving again, my girlfriend explained what just happened. Okay. While I was trying to look for the man in the area he initially vanished in, he circled back around and came out from another spot in the forest uh -huh. beyond my car headlights. My girlfriend had seen something out of the corner of her eye, and that's when she saw him. Before she honked the horn, he was walking towards me. His hatchet raised, as if making to strike me. Wow. We called the authorities what stopped once we got back safely home. Because he got horned but they at? never found anybody. Or they did, and just didn't tell us. Right. But the officer we spoke to explained his theory. The man was obviously looking to ambush unsuspecting lone travelers for Lord only knows what reason. Right. We all agreed that my girlfriend's quick thinking saved my life, as it let my potential killer know that I wasn't alone out there. I moved back into the area Still recently, though. so I now drive that highway often. No naked hatchet man sightings <laughs> yet. <laughs> yeah, naked hatchet men. That I'm definitely extra vigilant. I don't know if they'd be, uh, if they'd have enough sense to restrict themselves from just going ahead and taking context, care of the murder right I'm there. I'm a female, and this Weird. story happened to me about three years ago. Okay. I lived on a farm about eight miles away from my high school, 
right. from which I drive to back and forth. I had driven into town one night to see a Stay basketball meatballs. game at my school. Right. When I was on my way home, as I pulled away from the school, I noticed a red pickup truck follow me out of the parking lot. I thought nothing of it at first, right. thinking it was someone from the school who took the same road as me. Right. I've never been followed later, before. Though, the truck was still behind me. This raised my suspicion, so I began to watch the truck in my mirror. Take when four I changed rights. the speed I was going at, the driver of the truck changed his speed as well. You take four rights, you'll when know it if they follow you or not. So did he. It so was getting dark, <laughs> and I was starting to get a little freaked out by this car. Do you call then, the truck Somebody turned on its high beams, flooding my car with light. Right. He left them on for almost a minute. He probably wants to pass me. I thought, uh -huh. but I was becoming more and more uneasy. So go Usually, faster. I drove home over Maybe. the back road. Not too many people went that way. Right. But when I turned onto the road, so did the truck. Okay. I've got to get away from him, yeah. I thought. And so I began to drive faster. Be careful now. Then he turned his high beams on again. Right. After a minute, he turned them off. Then he turned them on again and off again. Like keys. I drove you to even pull faster. Over but the truck driver stayed right behind me. Then, he turned his high beams on again. Once more, my cart was ablaze with light. What is he doing? What does he want? Harassing you. Then, he turned them off again. But a minute later, he had them on again and left them on. At last, I pulled into my driveway and of course the truck pulled in right behind me. What the heck? I jumped from the car and to the house. Maybe something called was- Called the police. I screamed at my father. Out in the driveway, I could still see the truck. This time, the driver came out with a gun in his hand. The hell? When the police arrived, they started to arrest him, but he pointed to my car. There was somebody in the back seat. Me, he said, "You want him?" Pointing at my car. The police checked the back seat of my car, and crouched behind the driver's seat was a man with a knife. As the driver of the truck explained, "What it, the hell?" The man slipped into my car just before I left the school. He so saw he it happen, followed you back but there was no all way the way? What? He thought about getting the police, but he was too afraid to leave me. So he followed the You could have just called? Each time the man in the back seat reached up to overpower me, the driver of the truck turned on his high beams. Wow. Then the man dropped down, afraid that someone might see him. Oh my god! I didn't see that coming at all toward the end! Crazy! Can you imagine, dude? I live a couple of blocks away the from hell? the only forensic psychiatric hospital in my state. Uh -huh. I believe there is an unmarked assisted living facility on my street too. And as frequently, people with mental disabilities okay. walked up and down the footpath. Right. There was an uproar a year ago when a patient who had been committed for murder escaped. Oh, But dang. otherwise, it's a peaceful and nice street. Right. One That's rainy night though, though, I was pulling into my apartment uh -huh. when I noticed a man across the road. It was pouring down, but he just stood there drenched in a thin shirt and shorts, staring directly at me. Yeah. As I was driving, I noticed him walking faster and faster. He was following me. I'd, Luckily, I'd freak out, I was out, faster bro. than him. Crazy people so, scare me. when I hurried to park my car <laughs> and entered my apartment's complex main entrance, just he was a good distance you know? away. Creeped out, I hurried into my apartment. Right. And after a time passed, I decided to peek out the curtain. He's he was be there, right there, standing in the rain. Yep. And although there are several apartments in my complex, <laughs> and he couldn't have seen which one I entered, or spotted me through the small crack in the curtain, he was looking I swear that he was looking straight at my apartment, at mm -hmm. me. Then he began a series of movements. I don't know how to explain it. He walked sideways, but he'd raise his knee very high, then slowly slap it down onto the pavement. He was doing a kata? <laughs> then he'd raise his other <laughs> knee very ritual? high, and do the same thing again. Right. He looked like a marionette puppet. Oh. Or like he was moving underwater. It didn't look like a foot drop, mortar disorder, drunken gait, or anything I've seen before. Clearly he was... His pale, wet face remained off. fixated on my apartment window the entire time. He moved so slowly that it must have been five minutes before he moved past the span of a few houses. That's so bizarre. Then I realized he was actually slowly starting to move forward uh -huh. onto the road toward my window. Okay. I went to grab my phone, and when I returned to the window, he was gone. He was gone. I imagined him pounding on my door, or climbing my balcony. Oh my god. I watched for another five minutes, 
and saw a squad car slowly roll down my street. Good. That happened so rarely in my quiet suburb that I suspect they were looking for him. Ah, uh, maybe he escaped, man. Yeah, living next to a mental institution is kind of like living next to a prison, right? You never think anything's going to go wrong, but if something does, you can pretty much point the finger at that being the culprit. You know, it's either an escaped prisoner or something like that. You can usually tell when people are off too, like standing in the rain, just drenched, just staring, you know, there's something definitely wrong with that. It's obvious. Most people would just call the police instead. I mean, you a taxpayer, right? Just call the police, let them figure it out. If it's nothing, what they gonna do, sue you? Nope, exactly. Be safe out there, guys. Hope you all had a great Christmas. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check Spooked Out right there, as well as a couple other stories that I reacted to from him here. Thanks so much for watching. As always, this is Ulogen signing off, and we'll see you next time. Break it down.